Good morning and welcome to the Stall Stevie Morning Show. I'm Courtney. I'm Jenna. And today we're going to be talking all about printing bags. So where to source them, best practices, bags present a huge opportunity for decorators to print and profit from add-on sales to different markets. And there's a lot of different ways that you can really expand and grow your business because bags are very usable. They're things that, um, unlike t-shirts, are something that somebody's going to use multiple days. And so they're willing to make an investment and they're willing to really um, use a lot of them throughout their day to day. So we'll talk about that. First, let's kick off with the look of the week. Look of the week. It's a three color or a multicolor design done with foil. It has glitter, it has fashion film, and it really speaks to taking the opportunity of a time of year like this where something is very popular, whether it's pumpkin spice or it's fall or um, anything like that, and just leveraging it for some custom t shirt sales. And so I think that's a really great way to do that. Yeah, and I really like the multi mixed media there with all of the foil and glitter and what I'm assuming is fashion film on there with that nice matte finish. It all comes together very nicely and perfect for this time of year and reaching new customers just by um, seasonally introducing new things into what you're creating already. Yeah, and this is the time for seasonal decorating, yes. that's for sure. Um, you can always send your look of the week to us by emailing us at tv at stalls.com. You can submit them where this one was found. It's on our Facebook page. Every Saturday we do a show and tell just here on the stalls, all things heat printing. We love to see every week what everybody's creating. And I know a lot of the other people on the page enjoy watching that as well. And then you can also tag us on Instagram at Stalls TV. We follow that as well. And so we love seeing what you guys share with us on Instagram too. Right. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the discussion today. Um, so as you mentioned, we're going to be talking about all the different types of bags that you can print uh, from that to different finishes that you can achieve and just some all around tips on how you can easily heat print these. So some people are a little bit on edge of jumping in. So we're going to kind of um, break that open today so you're not so um, iffy about starting to heat print them and just being able to dive in easily. So first we'll start off with the opportunity of printing bags and this just really brings in, even if you're, I like to kind of do it if you're printing for an event. So. Um, a lot of people like to do t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that for events. So being able to offer something that's a little unique, uh, such as a bag and adding personalization to that, since it's something that they're gonna be carrying uh, from day to day as opposed to a t-shirt they wear here and there, they'll be more likely to buy it because it's something that they will find use out of. Um, and then of course, they'll be more likely to buy if you're adding personalization on there. So that's another opportunity is uh, monogramming and name drops and such like that. Yeah, I think we're starting to see the personalization aspect of it, monogramming and all that really, really take off. I think mm -hmm. it's probably one of the most possible, um, one, one of the most popular ways that bags are personalized today. Um, I think it started with companies like 31 offering some of those more boutique, fancy style bags and then adding monogramming name drop personalization on there. Um, promotional products is actually another incredibly popular place that we see them. And you mentioned event printing a little bit, so right. I would kind of drop that into the promotional product mm -hmm. bucket. but. Even outside of that, we look at um, promotional giveaways, we look at them for gifts for customers, we look at a lot of corporations purchasing them for their employees, maybe it's car dealerships, maybe it's insurance companies. Um, all of those companies usually look for some type of bag and when we look at why they move towards bags, one of the things that's interesting about bag printing from a promotional product standpoint is that they're more usable and so when you're looking for items or your customers are looking for items that they can put their branding on that they're going to hand out maybe at a giveaway that's going to be seen um, by thousands of people and they're going to be able to get a lot of um, brand recognition from it. Usually bags are a great way to do that because a t-shirt is worn every now and then. Um, a lot of the times promotional t-shirts might be worn um, at, outside or at home or something mm -hmm. like that whereas a promotional bag is usable so they're more likely to take that and you're going to get a higher return from the, the company and so in return they'll come back to you as a decorator by presenting promotional products um, like a bag and items like that and so there's a lot of opportunity there sports schools church groups weddings new babies um, i know all about that everything like that i mean there's just so many opportunities it's really just as big as the t-shirt market when you think about it Right, yeah, so what's nice about um, all these different manufacturers that offer a variety of different bags, each bag can fit into its own niche or its own market. So whether you're printing for uh, corporate and promotional or schools, you can find a bag that'll fit into that nicely at 
in any possible way. Uh, so then that kind of brings us into the type of types of designs that go on these uh, bags. So we do personalization a lot, which we already mentioned, which really came from like 31 and Marley Lily. Uh, so we're seeing monograms on there and name drops, uh, which you can kind of see on some of the bags that are here. Um, and then we also see a lot of school logos too. So uh, being able to print uh, school logos on tote bags for them to carry around school to put their books in or maybe it's to put their equipment in so uh, For a football team you would probably print a duffel bag or something like that for them Yeah, and even quotes saying stuff like mm -hmm. that We see a lot of like graphic t-shirts saying even that pops up a lot on especially tote style bags more the canvas uh, Market totes things like that um, and so there's a lot of designs a lot of opportunity to expand just like there is with t-shirt printing I think um, the types of decoration that you're doing really lend to the type of heat transfer that you're going to choose. Mm -hmm. um, heat printing is, of course, what we're going to talk about here today, and it's really one of the fastest ways that personalization on bags is growing. Um, if you're doing small quantities or one-offs for small businesses or just personalization, then screen printing isn't optimal for printing on bags. If you're doing it um, for personalization, a lot of the times, or sometimes, I should say, um, the budget or the time just doesn't allow for embroidery. In fact, I worked um, a couple weeks ago, I spoke with a uh, large gift shop, boutique style business that did embroidery for a long time, and they're actually seeing their business move to 60% heat transfer vinyl oh, wow. versus um, embroidery now. So it used to be a huge, they've seen a huge swing. It used to be a lot of embroidery, but mm -hmm. I think that speaks to the way that people are wanting to start to do monogramming and name drops on bags, especially boutique style like we see with the um, patterned ones here. Um, with yeah. heat transfer vinyl and so there's a lot of opportunity there for decorators. Yeah, I agree and it really just kind of opens up a whole nother side especially if you're doing screen printing and embroidery because screen printing obviously we know isn't the easiest way to do personalization. Right. You just don't want to have to go through that whole process. So we see a lot of screen printers incorporating this type of equipment in so they can do gift items and personal items such as bags. Um, and then embroiders, of course, they want to have to tie up their embroidery machine for uh, one thing um, and spending a lot of time there doing that. So being able to just hit it with the heat press real quick, um, less than 10 seconds, and then they're done with that personalization for that bag. Yeah, and the effects you can do with heat printing are big as well. So glitters, foils, uh, matte finishes, flock, fuzzy type finishes, mm -hmm. reflectives. I mean, there's a huge market there with different opportunities. Right, and then that kind of uh, opens up the different types of bags that we're going to be printing. So we see a wide range of bags in front of us from large tote bags to trick-or-treat totes to small wristlets, wristlets lunch boxes, and toiletry uh, bags. So being able to um, know the types of fabrics that you can apply to. So that's kind of why people go into heat transfer vinyl because it allows you versatility across all this range of different fabrics that you're applying to and not having to worry whether it's going to uh, fall off or not stand durably on there. Uh, so we have anywhere from cotton and polyester, 100% poly, canvas, burlap, you name it. There's a ton of different fabrics that go into creating bags. So having a transfer that will apply to any of those with no issue of falling off is going to be a lot easier and helpful for your customer. Yeah, and I think we're literally just scratching the surface with the bag styles we have yeah. here. I mean, there's cinch bags that are made of polyester or nylon, mm -hmm. and there's um, leather bags, and there's um, canvas, burlap. I mean, there's just so many um, wide range. We have a few of the fabrics here, but the styles and the fabrics available in bags are um, plenty, and I think that really depend that really expands. The market and that's why mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities because there's so many different items and styles that you can print. Now when I start to think about printing these bags, um, especially at a heat press, there are some things to consider. I always start at the sourcing side and so you want to source your bags in two ways. You want to pick something that's usable for your customers. So think um, first and foremost for everything, think about the niche that you're printing mm -hmm. for. Um, do they need certain pockets? Do they need certain styles of bags? And so um, there's actually a customer that we work with that does a lot of bags for dance teams mm -hmm. and she uses soccer bags and so thinking outside of 
what they can do because the soccer bag works perfectly perfectly they can put their dance shoes right on the bottom where the soccer shoes would go and then they've got the open part in the mid on the top and then, although this bag isn't designed for that market she found a perfect need for it for her customers and so that's one thing to consider secondly what we do here anytime we source a bag um, and we, as we test it you always want to test print a bag and you want to try to source bags that are optimal for printing and so when I look at this toiletry bag from Ogeo we purchased this from Sanmar um, but you'll notice there's a big zipper on the front here anything that has a zipper like this or this lunchbox from Wholesale Boutique where the flap flips open um, these types of bags and these types of things are easier to print because I can isolate my print location just like with everything that we've ever shown you here on the morning show with printing, you always have to get that print area flat on your heat press. And so when you have a pocket you can slip into away from the bulk, the seams, and all of the handles and those types of things on the bags, that's going to make it um, easier to print and going to make you, help set you up really for success. Yeah, so depending on the type of heat press that you're working with, there are interchangeable platens that are just quick change where you just unlock at the bottom and switch out your platen that are going to uh, work very easily for these. So what's nice about manufacturers that are creating items like this is they, they create them with the decorator in mind. They know that we're either embroidering, screen printing, or vinyl cutting and heat printing on these items. So they know that they need to isolate certain areas to make it easy for us to print on. So those interchangeable platens um, that Hotronics offers, which we show a lot on the morning show, um, are going to be really easy for just integrating with these. So some of the popular um, platens that work well with bags like these are the seven inch round, uh, the six by 10 and eight by 10, and even the four by four. So that platen is small enough where I can isolate this area here and print this without having to insert anything in here. So we, our goal is to isolate all this and we'll show you in the Make It Monday that we're doing here shortly. We don't want any of this hardware on here such as this strap and this metal clasp here to get in the way of us getting an even pressure. So being able to use interchangeable platens to isolate that one area that you're printing is going to help a lot. Yeah, I definitely think so. So, um, platens, you can move on to print perfect pads mm -hmm. like you're going to show Make It Monday, heat printing pillows, all of that will help isolate the print location. So, if you don't have a heat press that has interchangeable platens, mm -hmm. um, we'll show you like in Make It Monday some of the tools like the pads and the pillows that you can use. The main difference between the two is that pillow is going to give you a medium pressure um, or a light pressure in that pad that we use is going to help to raise the print area and give you a firm pressure. So that really depends on the transfer style that you're using when you're printing these types of bags. Um, and then some things, we had a couple questions coming in I can see on Facebook. So Angie asked, can you heat press on a leather bag? We're actually going to print today and make it Monday a faux leather bag um, or a vegan leather, which we're starting to call it now. Um, and you can heat press on that successfully. We've also printed on 100% leather before. If I moved 100% leather, I'm going to want an adhesive that um, has a much stronger um, adhesive to it. So, or I guess it sticks grip, a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more of a grip. That would be the Stalls Tech products, like in the CAD prints um, lineup or the full color transfers. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's faux leather, then we can use products that have a polyester or cotton base like our fashion film or glitter flake like we're going to show here and Make It Monday. Um, so just kind of check on that when you're purchasing the bag. Does um, Christina ask, does the vinyl stick to nylon or what vinyl sticks to nylon? Um, so there's a few options for that. Yeah, so depending on the HTV that you're putting on it. So we always recommend Gorilla Grip or uh, Thermo Grip for that because uh, it actually has an adhesive that can adhere to nylon without it melting or anything underneath that high heat. Uh, and then, of course, we have the materials that you mentioned um, in our full color digital line, which is that um, tech material, and that will pretty much adhere to anything. So that will work just fine for nylon, too. Yeah, so some great questions. And Jessica had followed up and asked if we can heat press onto canvas. Absolutely. Com canvas is actually more of a cotton-based fabric, mm -hmm. so as long as it sticks to cotton, it'll stick to canvas, and so those are usually incredibly easy to print. One thing I do caution you against is sometimes a light canvas, like a, a tan color, can scorch under a high heat, so you just want to try to keep the heat press relatively low, 320 or below. Once you get up to that 360, 350, you may see some discoloration, so safeguard yourself against that. Um, and that kind of leads us well into the types of heat transfers you can apply to bags and so we see a lot of heat transfer vinyl used mm -hmm. um, for different finishes and then I see a lot of print opportunity for print cut digital transfers because of the full color market with um, promotional products and so in the past it's been difficult to offer full color onto bags because 
Um, sublimation is very limited. Mm -hmm. um, direct to garment printing is very limited for bags. And so what you look at with um, digital transfers is you can get a very low cost um, and very easy to print option for printing some of these bags with full color images. Yeah, and sometimes it's just hard to, uh, and decorators don't also know this sometimes, is that they can actually outsource that. So if you're not doing um, print cut in-house, it's something that you can just send out and have printed for you and just be able to print that. So you don't have to turn those jobs down that have five to ten different colors in it and uh, worrying about trying to uh, eat that cost in your business. So um, being able to outsource that and utilize that to be able to print for promotional or corporate is definitely um, lucrative for your business. Yeah, and so there's a lot of things to consider there um, as far as finding the right transfer and how to print um, your bags. And so we've shared some stuff about best practices. We've shared some stuff about sourcing or uh, checking, checking and finding styles of bags. Um, so let's talk a little about where to source bags. So one question we always get from decorators um, time and time again on morning shows and live classes is mm -hmm. where do you find that bag or where did you get that? So some tips there? Uh, some tips that I always recommend. So it definitely depends on the market or niche that you are printing for. So if you're doing a lot of uh, boutique style printing for your customers, then wholesale boutique and wholesale accessory market. Um, all about me, blank, wild about me, blanks. They all offer a variety of different boutique style um, bags. So what you're seeing here with this tote bag, um, and even these um, trick or treat tote bags and these lunch boxes, things with like patterns in them that are very Marley Lily inspired or 31 inspired, are definitely um, going to be sourced from uh, those wholesalers. Now, if you're looking into corporate or promotional products, that's going to be Sanmar and Alpha Broder because they all offer a variety of different styles there too. Yeah, and so it depends really, you know, like we said at the beginning, it comes down to understanding your customer base, understanding the niche mm -hmm. that you want to reach. And so if your goal is to start selling add-on sales or additional products to the, your current customer base, and maybe their schools or sports teams or corporate clients, um, then I would look at some of those bags that um, are from Sanmar, s, &S mm -hmm. Alpha Broder, maybe a cinch bag, a duffel bag, a, cam a market tote. Um, you may be looking, uh, understanding your customers, it may be a promotional item, so you may need a very inexpensive um, giveaway bag, maybe a polypropylene bag or a um, canvas bag, something that's very inexpensive so that you can print a lot of them. And if you're going to do that, then you know we look at the heat transfer type of a screen printed transfer or direct screen printing to be able to print those. Um, so those are some things to consider from those suppliers. Now when we look, if I'm going to be wanting to do monogramming personalization in boutiques, then there's a few suppliers there that will help you. Wholesale Boutique, we share a lot here on The Morning Show. They also have um, a brand of the Closeout Boutique, which is helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple questions coming in here on um, Facebook, so we'll go ahead and just mention some of the brands again that we had talked about for boutiques and things. Um, also, Teresa said she loves the travel bag from Sanmar, so if you're looking for a specific travel bag, she shares the, the BG700 there, so great to share that one there. Um, and this toiletry bag is definitely a hot seller. I think we're going to see a lot of these for Christmas time for the yeah. trendy traveler, <laughs> um, as they call them. Um, so some of those wholesalers where we talked about Sanmar, Alpha Broder, s, &S Activewear, um, those would be kind of the um, standard ones that you're going to see a lot of just different styles of bags from for different markets, kind of the corporate school, mm -hmm. um, church groups type of market. And then a few of them for the gifting in boutiques was wholesaleboutique.com, as well as Closeout Boutique, which is another brand of theirs that you can purchase products through if you can't purchase from Wholesale Boutique. Um, Southern Home Blanks, allaboutblanks.com, wildaboutmeblanks.com. And then we also um, discovered a company in Alabama called WholesaleAccessoryMarket.com, and they had a wide range of um, just a ton of different types of gifts. We, I mean, we've seen everything from tote bags and wristlets to crossbody bags to mm -hmm. casserole covers. I mean, there's a huge <laughs> market when you think about gifts and uh -huh. how you can personalize it. So the opportunity is out there. It's just kind of narrowing in where you want to be with your niche. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also uh, important to know what you're doing is best for um, printing whenever you're doing this. So we'll go ahead and start the Make It Monday so we can show you uh, the best practices when printing certain bags. All 
Okay, so I have the Hotronics Fusion here and we're going to be printing a small wristlet here. So you can see there are a lot of different compartments here. So I'm going to have to use an accessory known as the uh, Print Perfect Pad and it's just gonna fit right into this front pocket, okay? So I'm just going to be isolating this area and I'm just gonna lay this down right on my 16 by 20 platen. So just to give you an idea of what this Print Perfect pad looks like, it's dense enough so that it can isolate one area without any of this hardware on this wristlet getting in my way for an even pressure. All right, so we are printing faux or vegan leather. Uh, so what I'm going to do is place my transfer down, make sure I'm right on that heat printing pad there. And I'm just gonna tack this for three to five seconds. So with Glitter Flake, you're able to tack it so whenever you're working with heat sensitive materials, such as a vegan leather, being able to have the ability to tack that is gonna allow us to get that on there nicely and then be able to apply it a second time with a different cover sheet that I'm gonna be showing you here shortly. So I'm just going to peel this hot all right, so this is on there nice and good, but I need to make sure that I'm getting the full application. So what I'm going to do is use my flexible application pad. So this is a rubberized silicone cover sheet that is going to go over any heat sensitive fabric. So this is gonna be perfect for this faux leather wristlet. All right, so whenever I'm using the application pad, what I need to do is increase my dwell time an additional 10 seconds. So my glitter flake applies at 300 degrees for typically around 10 to 15 seconds. But since I am applying it with the flexible application pad, I'm gonna apply it for a full 25 seconds. All right, and this cover sheet works well with um, any other type of faux leather. So if you're doing any other type of thin leather, uh, faux leather, it'll work well for that. It'll work well for uh, printing um, real leather. Also, any other heat sensitive items um, that could melt under any high heat. So just keep in mind whenever you are using this cover sheet that you are increasing the dwell time an additional 10 seconds. Okay, so I can go ahead and remove my flexible application pad. I can also take out my Print Perfect pad and we have a complete personalized wristlet here done in glitter flake on a faux leather wristlet. Okay, so this brings up a lot of opportunity for this, kind, for this time of year. So with Christmas coming up, keep in mind that this is a perfect gifting item. And this was a wristlet purchased from Wholesale Boutique. So it's that supplier that we mentioned earlier. And that completes this week's Make It Money. So we'll go back and join Courtney. I think that was a pretty great look that you had there putting the tone-on-tone uh, -tone glitter flake mm -hmm. on the metallic bag and so it really just speaks to some of the finishes that you can do um, with these different types of materials on these bags. Um, one thing I did want to mention because we didn't talk about it is you may have noticed Jenna didn't preheat and so when you print oh. bags um, you don't really need to simply right. because they're not going to be laundered and so especially when I look at heat sensitive items like this faux leather, um, polypropylene, maybe a polyester of some sort, um, if I can skip that preheat then it'll help to reduce the amount of heat that's on that bag if it's heat sensitive avoiding any scorching and so um, so things to keep in mind whenever you're printing you can skip the preheat with the bags especially if you're worried about that being a challenge. Um, we did have a couple questions come in. Sherry asked um, who was the wholesaler for the black and orange bag. So both of these Halloween style bags that we have here are from wholesaleboutique.com um, and so you can purchase those from them or any of their distributors. And then um, you also had the question how do you mix screen print transfer with vinyl, what temperature to use and what is applied first. Um, and so it really depends on what screen print and transfer and vinyl you're using. If you're going to mix the two together, um, I would recommend using the Goof Proof ink mm -hmm. from Transfer Express. They have an alternate application that allows you to do it at 340 degrees. And so I can set my temperature at 340 degrees, apply my screen print and transfer, 
and then apply my heat transfer vinyl. And if you're using something like fashion film or glitter flake, um, they're incredibly resilient mm -hmm. and so they will apply fine at that 340 degrees without any durability issues. Um, and it, it really just depends on what vinyl you're using. Now if I'm expanding something like foil, you're going to want to make sure the foil is applied at 300 degrees. And um, the adhesive product there, if you're using another screen printed transfer, you may want to um, change the application. I really just would say go highest temperature first and press that and then do your second application. So it looks like I got all the questions on Facebook. Joe, do we have questions coming in on GoToWebinar that we can answer? Yes, Laura would like to know, she says she has a customer looking for garment bags for a dance team. Uh, do you have any experience printing in that garment bag or a good source? I know that Wholesale Boutique does sell um, some garment style bags. I don't know of any other suppliers, but um, as long as you can find one that's either a polyester or a cotton, the one from Wholesale Boutique is actually a cotton fabric, so it's incredibly easy to sear sucker, so it was easy to print. We have one here at the studio. Um, but I would just look for cotton or polyester when you're sourcing them. That way they're going to be easy to print. And then Lou would like to know, are there any tips for cleaning the flexible, flexible application pads? Any tips for cleaning the flexible application pad? I don't know of any. Um, I assume maybe if an adhesive or something got up on there. Um, I don't have any other than maybe like a Goo Gone or something and seeing how that kind of applies so to, to remove some say of the, the adhesive. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't actually ran into that, so I'd be curious to see if anybody here on Facebook or anyone on GoToWebinar has cleaned a flexible application pad. You guys can let us know. All right, perfect. So looks like we've got all the questions here today. We appreciate you joining us. Um, hopefully we've inspired you to step outside the box and really start to look at printing bags. There's so many opportunities to, to really grow there. Next week, uh, myself and Jimmy will be back and we're going to be talking all about blank wholesaler suppliers. And so we're excited to come back next Monday. We'll see you here on Facebook or go to webinar. See you then. See ya.